This is a cat that has this incredible mountain area as its environment. This cat just really wants to avoid human contact at all costs, and it'll see a lot more people than ever people will see the snow leopard. So seeing it is a real, real privilege. That tail is about three foot long. It's about the length of the body. They're jumping from rock to rock, often on narrow precipices. So it's a great balancing tool. They have enormously large forepaws to get a good grip on rocks or loose talus slopes. They have an incredible sight, and it's something they can pick up motion just like that from miles away. Now that's a tough species because they're in rugged mountain country and they're absolutely superb at hiding. You can look straight at a snow leopard, you know he's right there on the hillside in front of you and don't see him until he moves. The smoky gray coat blends so into the rocks that it's very difficult to see. Chasing that ghost of an animal is the life passion of Rodney Jackson, who initiated the first long-term study of snow leopards, a mission more dangerous than he imagined. One afternoon, I was climbing a hillside where we had a trap, and suddenly I'm face to face with a very angry leopard. And so it was very lightly immobilized. We had 10 minutes, as I recall, to change the collar, and it was during that process the cat's head rested on the rock and it, it managed just to bite me. And it wasn't for long, but it caused enough injury to me that I realized I had to leave campsite and go to Kathmandu. And so I got to the doctor 12 days later after the bite and kind of took a look at it and said, a lot of dead meat, what the hell do you expect me to do? <laughs> Fortunately, the cat got me at just the right place. Jackson couldn't wait to get back to the field study and his single-mindedness has become a well-known trademark. Rodney is a very good natural scientist. As I got into the profession, Rodney was out in Nepal. I used to hear about him, how he lost half his body weight, radio tracking snow leopards in this extremely hostile condition. Jackson's study began to reveal how snow leopards communicated and shared space with limited prey in their home range. Snow leopards, although they're solitary, do a lot of social marking. They'll scrape the ground with their hind paws, and they'd also go up to rock faces, overhanging preferably, and they'll spray it with their urine. And all this information, we believe, contains all sorts of knowledge for other snow leopards. Who left the scent, how long ago it was, uh, what gender they are, and that way share a common space, but separated time-wise. One critical need in their space, or habitat, is an abundance of prey and it is declining. If they can't find their natural prey, they'll turn to livestock, and that leads immediately to a human-wildlife conflict issue. It is particularly bad with snow leopards, as often they will jump in the poorly constructed corrals of the area and kill multiple times. And once a snow leopard jumps into a thing like this, there's chaos. The snow leopard's hunting instinct is being repeatedly triggered, and it's not happy until, you know, there's no movement around, so. 25 goats or sheep are dispatched pretty quickly. That's practically a license to kill the snow leopard for the nomads and native small farmers whose herds of a few dozen goats or sheep are the equivalent of their bank account. But in looking at the issue with an eye towards preserving the cat, Jackson was able to devise a solution. Predator-proof the corrals by using wire mesh, fencing, and large poles to create an enclosure. Locals have largely embraced Jackson's efforts to learn about and save the snow leopard, even helping follow the urine marking sense of the big cats. We became rock sniffers, and we'd go to every big pile of boulder that looked the right candidate, and we'd sniff it. We, of course, would stick our heads under all these rocks, and we had very scratched noses, and the villagers just cracked up with us, and whenever we saw them, They'd walk over to the nearest rock and start going like that and just holes of laughter. You know? <laughs> A clear census on the number of snow leopards left is tough to pin down. They range over 12 countries in some of the toughest high altitude landscape on Earth. A crude, and it's a very crude estimate, is somewhere between 7,500 uh, down to maybe 4,000 or less. We know that in certain countries, for example, Nepal, India and parts of northern Pakistan, where we have been working with local communities, the number of cats are increasing, or at least remaining stable. 
In other areas where there are either no conservation programs, they have all experienced a dramatic decline in the number of snow leopards. This year we're going to initiate a new project radio tracking using satellite collars instead of the traditional ones where you had to locate them from the ground. So we will get downloaded each day on our website or secure website the location of where the cat was last seen at. We know what the sort of solutions and general strategic approaches to snow leopard conservation are, but we don't have the resources. The resources in terms of trained individuals in these range countries, committed governments, and especially money because basically these countries are way too impoverished to mount a snow leopard conservation program. So it's a frustration of knowing what to do but not having all the resources. Humans are running out of time. Snow leopards certainly are threatened. And I think the two of us are linked. The future of snow leopard is linked with the future of human beings.